Spooky Podcast, Leanna Bamp. Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to a very special live recording of Let's Get Spooky. And I am super excited to introduce my guest. He's a director, executive producer, special effects and makeup supervisor on AMC's The Walking Dead. Put your hands together for Mr. Greg Nicotero. Welcome, my friend. Hi, how are you? We had a whole Pratt fall rehearsed. We did. I can I... fall and trip and explode, and it was going to be 10 gallons of blood. But the air mortars didn't work. Otherwise, you would all be covered in blood. So listen, it would have. I had paper towels, but I don't have enough paper towels, so it would have been a mess. Yes, there, that was the problem in Long Beach. We didn't have enough paper towels to clean up the blood, so they discouraged us. We often from covering have. everyone in blood, but you know, maybe another time. So I am so happy to see you. It's been a little uh, bit of time, but we go yes, way back. We did. We were just talking about this about like seven years, right? Yeah. At you some know, random convention somewhere in the world. It was random conventions, and then you became one of the spokespeople for The Walking Dead. Yeah. You were kind of like the face of the show. Yeah, it was super fun. And good, then and good. then COVID happened, so you know, we'll we'll get back there. So then you were a half a face. Yeah. <laughs> yes. For yes. The show. Um, so we have an hour of fun in store. We're gonna hang out, we're gonna chat, we are gonna share some spooky stories, and if you're up for it, we're gonna play a couple rounds of what's in the coffin. I already know. You don't know. I do. No, you don't know. But, but here's, but okay, I, I was just told behind uh, backstage that we have to play this game. No, but, I didn't say you had to. I said no, 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 but to. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an interactive. Oh, okay. Thing. I think it's going to be great. It's, it's okay. All right, it's going to be fun. I mean, I know it's going to be fun because I know what's in the coffin, so it's going to be great for me. Thank you. Yeah, I do. I, unless you have some surprises in store. Um, so when I have a new guest on the show, I like to start off with some of your firsts, because I feel like we get to know you a little bit more. I mean, everybody knows Greg, right? We all know Greg. Uh, we all know the amazing things that we've done. Um, but we want to take it back. We're going to take a trip down memory lane to wee little Greg as he was a child. And we're going to find out what your very first horror movie was and how old you were. Because I think this is a very telling question. You learn a lot about a person by their very I, first I already, I already love this interview. Okay, <laughs> so my dad was a big uh, tech junkie. And we're talking about like 1970s tech, which is like reel-to-reel -reel VHS or reel-to-reel, -reel. like you, it, it was kind of crazy. There was one store in Pittsburgh called Opus One and they sold VCRs. So VCRs, we, everybody know? Raise your hand if you VCRs. know what a VCR is. Yes. Okay. All right. Some all of the them. old people just raised their hands. <laughs> <laughs> the young people were like, what is this? That what was like these a letters they speak. <laughs> so we so what we had a TV that you could plug the VCR into and it would record the signal okay. from the rabbit ears. Rabbit ears. Okay, rabbit, rabbit ears, <laughs> not just Bugs Bunny. Yeah. They were like four channel. It's a long story. We have, we have an app. Anyway, the first two movies that we ever recorded, Christopher Lee, Horror of Dracula. Yeah. Amazing. One of my favorites. And the second was The Time Machine. So we had these two movies and the trick was the the reel to reel recorders were the tape only lasted an hour. So you would have to the, it would run out halfway through the movie and you'd have to re-thread the tape. So, so you missed a little bit, but you, you, missed never, you can never get it back. 12 seconds. Yeah. But I will tell you that that was part of what made me really good at directing and editing and stuff because you'd have to wait till the commercial, if there was a commercial, <laughs> and you'd have to re-thread. So I... Wait, so you did it in 12 seconds? I feel like that's pretty impressive. I was, I was really good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Horror of Dracula, and uh, with Christopher Lee, so the opening scene with the credits, and you know, dum dum, you know, uh, James, uh, oh my God, James Bernard's theme, and then you see the Dracula coffin and the blood drips on it. I know she knows. But anyway, those were the first two movies. How old were you? Do you remember? I was probably ten, maybe okay. nine. So still probably too young to be. Watching that stuff, right? Is there an age of I mean, you know? no, I, I say that because I watch 
I watched The Exorcist, I was eight, and I'm still terrified of being possessed. Like, as an adult, the fear has grown throughout my life, and I just feel like maybe if I was 10 or maybe 12, I probably would have been so afraid, but, you know. Okay, okay, well, that's, that's legit, so <laughs> I, but for me, okay, so my, the first movie that gave me nightmares that I couldn't sleep was a movie called Terror in the Wax Museum. Oh. And it was a it was a really it was a cheap rip off of House of Wax. So there this uh, these people bought this wax museum and the figures would come to life. So it was Jack the Ripper that came to life and the the, the characters in the museum started killing people and it was like a low rent version of House of Wax. And it scared the hell out of me. So the only way that I could fall asleep was I would take like little kids' books, like Dr. <laughs> Seuss, or you know, that was I can remember the book. It was called Here Comes the Strikeout. Oh my god, kid. And it was a book about a kid who struck out all the time and then finally he hit the home run. So I would read these books over and over again Happy until thoughts. I finally <laughs> fall asleep. And then my mom would come in and she would turn the lights off. And then she would take the book out of my hand, and then I would scream bloody murder, <laughs> turn the light back on, and put the book back in my hand, and I would read it again. Because that was the only way, because I had Your such comfort. a vivid imagination. I mean, wax figures are already terrifying, and then them coming to life, that's nightmares. And, and during the pandemic, I watched the movie again. It's so shitty. It matter, because it was the memory of that yeah. movie of seeing Jack the Ripper coming to life. And it was so scary, and that trilogy of terror, um, which I was terrified by, which you know, I, I'm so sorry for the younger generation, because older people that would see the TV, get, we, look, get the TV guy. Remember oh, the TV yeah. guy? Yeah. Yeah, the TV guy. Yeah. Okay, so real horror fans, the TV guy would show up on Thursday and you'd go through and you'd circle the stuff that you would want to watch. And if you missed it, you were screwed because they weren't going to run it yep. 17 times. Right. And there's no on demand streaming. No on demand. King Kong versus Godzilla, 4 yeah. o'clock, Friday afternoon. <laughs> so the TV guy would show up and you would circle the stuff that you would want to watch. And you would just. It was the it was like Christmas. Every it was horror Christmas. Bloody, Bloody you know, Christmas. Black Christmas. Black Christmas. <laughs> and I loved it and and I talked so much about the fact that when you talk to filmmakers now that are my age, you know, Frank Darabont and Quentin and Robert Rodriguez and all these people, we all did the same thing. We all like you'd have to circle the TV guide and you'd have to really work for it. Yeah, there was I really actually, attribute, yeah. I, I attribute a lot of our current directors for the fact that when movies came out, if you wanted to be a horror fan, you had to work at it. Mm -hmm. You had to find it, you had to, and it wasn't like backslash, enter, delete, whatever. <laughs> Watch it from your iPhone. Yeah, you know, that yeah. stuff didn't exist. You really had to work at it. And you would go to midnight movies, and I remember seeing a midnight movie of Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. That was about, I had seen it 70 times. <laughs> but, you know, they had like six prints because they couldn't afford to make a bunch of prints. So they'd send the movies to the drive-ins and the midnight movies, and the projectionist would be like, oh, I love that shot of the zombie biting the girl. So they would cut frames out. So by the time, <laughs> but then, like within a year, it'll be like Dawn of the Dead. The end. <laughs> the movie would be over because they were taking, chipped. Yeah. They were taking film strips wow. out of the movie. Yeah. And so I would oh, go to the yeah. drive-in and take my my cassette recorder and I would record the audio. I remember recording like, the thing and Creepshow and Road Warrior and Blade Runner. And Logan's run, and I would sit there, and I would record them in the drive-in, and I would go home, and I would listen to them over and over and over again. Yeah. I would just close my eyes and imagine what the movie was. And so that did a lot for sort of sparking my imagination of seeing something that I thought I saw, and mm -hmm. listening to it over and over again. And then I would see it again, and I'm like, oh, it was mm -hmm. way worse was, than, yeah, was that right? than it was when I saw it. And so, 
that. That was like a nine hour answer to one. No, but <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great, I mean, this might go longer than an hour, but there's no one in here after us. So I, I got creative, um, I got freedom, they're like, you can go a little longer, so. That's good. You know, that's what everybody feel. strives for, creative freedom. Creative freedom, we just do our thing. Um, so I'm, this is an assumption, but I feel like I'm probably right. You were a Halloween kid, right? Oh, yeah. Halloween was your absolute favorite. So do you remember uh, your very first Halloween memory? It could be your, your first Halloween memory, your favorite Halloween memory from being a kid. Well, I have a couple because my mom made really good costumes. So I was the Wolfman one year. Lovely. And so my mom got fun fur and she <laughs> made little covers for my boots. I love you, Mom. So she stitched like black fur, because I, I, I was in Walt Disney World in 1972. It was the first time we ever went, and they had, a, they had House of Magic on Main Street. You know, all these old people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> my husband knows <laughs> House of Magic. He talks about it all the time. House of Magic, and I bought, I bought a Don Post Wolfman mask and hands. And of course, the, the the fur was brown, so my mom's like, well, I'm going to make you, so she got a pair of jeans and she, she made little black boots, black fur boots, and I was so pissed. <laughs> the fur was black. You're like, Mom, and I was this like, is Mom, brown. the wolf man doesn't have black hair, he has brown hair, so it's really kind of pissed. So, but I <laughs> wore them, nice. and of course it was, this was the 70s, so it looked like I was like a really bad disco kid with black fur <laughs> boots and the brown hair. And then, of course, um, my dad's doctor. So I went as the mummy one year, and, and I remember we were waiting for him to come home from work, and we were waiting and waiting, and I was like, oh, my friend's like, you, you gotta go out. It's trick or treating. Trick or treating. Yeah. I'm like, you don't understand, I gotta wait. So my dad came home and brought like, five bags of gauze from the emergency room. <laughs> and I'm like, like this Kobe? I'll be right out. And then I just <laughs> wrapped it myself up. So meanwhile, there's probably people in Pittsburgh bleeding to death. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a badass look of money. Because there was not enough gauze, but I looked great. <laughs> and that's really so, what's important because if, now you have this memory to share with I this whole group of people. So I was a really good mummy. Uh, and I was the werewolf. I'm going to write a, a short story called The Werewolf with Black Fur. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be a creep show episode. Maybe. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, so, I think you mentioned a memory of being afraid from watching a horror movie when you were younger, but do you remember your first, the first time you were afraid? And it, it could be maybe it was a horror movie, maybe we got hit with a baseball. Well, I'm know. terrified, I'm terrified of spiders. Terrified. Really? And it's a very... No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who said what? <laughs> no, I'm what I'm watching. No. Me too. Okay, so... And I, and I know the day that it happened. So we were in the basement of, of my parents' house, and my folks are massive movie buffs. So like when Planet of the Apes came out, and From Russia with Love came out, and all these movies, my parents would take us. 2001, I had no fucking idea what the movie was about. I saw it 70 times when I was a little kid. And I was like, oh yeah, man, there's this weird psychedelic drug trip. I'm like, oh. It's like these lights, it was really I know, weird. It's very harsh. So, um, so my dad showed us uh, Alexander Corda's version of Thief of Baghdad, and Sabu fights a giant spider. And it was this amazing puppet that had to be 15, 20 feet across. And it was a marionette, so I saw it and it scared the hell out of me. And it was like, I was like, before I watched it, I love spiders. They're the greatest. They eat all the insects, so and you know it keeps the population of insects. And it's the great. They're the greatest th things in the world. And then two hours later, they are Satan. <laughs> <laughs> so must kill. He must kill every spider. Like a little spider, but then a fifteen. I mean, that's and, terrifying. Okay. So I feel like we should all be afraid of that. So here's the kicker. So I'm like, okay, spiders, not so good. So then the next day, when I go outside in my backyard. And there's a banana spider about that big, and it's black and it's yellow, and big legs, and it, I swear to God. And it was the day after I saw a thief of Baghdad, and so I'm like, they're invading! <laughs> they're everywhere! It was before Giant Spider Invasion, where they made the giant spider and put it on the Volkswagen and drove it down the street. Oh. Any of you that know that movie? <laughs> Terrified. 
So I not mean, a big spider. And so when we shot Creep Show, we did a couple spider things. I actually let a tarantula crawl on me. Tarantulas are great. I have one. I was very. I would have brought if I would have. <laughs> I know. It's not like a or anything. It's not if, like that's in the, if that's in the coffin. Listen. Guess what's in the coffin? It's not. There's no living things because she's fragile and we don't want to hurt her. Do you want to guess? You're gonna guess. You're gonna you're gonna figure it out. I have faith in you. All right. I, it's so spiders. Not a tarantula. So and you spiders, and you were little. Not. But I but I'm I feel like I'm getting a little better. We shot an episode of The Walking Dead last year where Daryl and Rosita go to this farmhouse and they save this woman who is stuck in the farmhouse. So they go through this whole herd of zombies. And uh, we had 200 extras and the crew's sitting outside and the house is there and they're like, Greg, don't go on the front porch. I'm like, what are you talking about? I can go wherever I am. I'm producing don't the show. Me what to do. I told him to do. Executive producer EP, Greg Nicotero. I can do whatever I want. I didn't say that, but it was funny. I'm like, this is the comedy stylings. Like. However, they're like, don't go on the porch. And I'm like, what? what are you? The, the house was infested with spiders. And, and in Georgia, there was a big news story about like these spiders that would. <laughs> and all the webs in my head, they were like, Spiders this big all over the house. I mean, that's. I have a tarantula, and I, I would generally say that I love her very much, but if there's a little house spider. Is her name Mrs. Greg Nicotero? No. <laughs> I, that's a missed opportunity on my part. Her name is Booty because she has a big old booty. <laughs> I think I like her. <laughs> Maybe you can meet her someday, but she's, I promise you she's not in the um, but if I was at the house infested with spiders, I'd probably not be okay with it. Yeah, it was kind of freaky. But I love that the crew was like, they all know. <laughs> we were scouting locations once. I was, because, you know, in the, in the studio where we shot the show, we had a big back lot. And we would film, like, all the scenes, you know, with Negan's scene. And, uh, like, when Carl got shot by Otis and Rick. I, like, all of it. We shot it all in the back lot. So if you ever came to Sonoy, I'd be like, yeah, we shot there, we shot there, we shot there, we shot there, we shot there. And we were driving through the woods one day, looking at scouting to direct an episode, and I saw a spider web, like, as the golf cart. I jumped out of the golf cart. <laughs> I was like, I don't, know. So I'm like no, I'm I don't care. And the guy who was driving was like, Greg, so I... I just saw the web and I saw the... Wait, you just saw the web and you didn't see the spider? No. Because the spider was in evidence. You know, I mean, I... I <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're moving on. We're done talking about spiders. Right. So, your career has been insane. I mean, you've worked on some pretty killer stuff, from assisting Tom Savini to now you're at the helm of the world's biggest franchises, The Walking Dead and Creep Show. Tell us about that journey, because amazing. It's amazing. Wait, so this is a 25-year question? Yes, but we're, we're not going to do the, like a, just a recap, brief recap. Yes, okay, so um, it's been great. <laughs> it's really been, it's been so much fun. You know, I met, uh, ironically, I met George Romero. I was in a restaurant in Rome. My parents, like, it was the first, like, time we had ever been to Europe, and uh, George was there having dinner, and I knew who he was because I lived in Pittsburgh and I living dead, and, and uh, ironically, uh, my uncle was an actor at the time, and he was in The Crazies, so he gets killed in The Crazies, and he wrote one of the first articles about George in Cine Fantastic magazine. So I saw George eating dinner at the table next to us. And I'm, like, I'm Greg Nicotero, you know, my uncle Sam. And he went, oh, yeah. So we talked for a while. And he said, oh, we should come visit. You know, my office is downtown Pittsburgh, 247 Fort Pitt Boulevard. You should come visit. So literally. Do you remember the address? Of course I remember the address. <laughs> so we flew home, and like the next day, I'm like, Mom, Dad, can I borrow the car? And I probably drove like to George's office right when I got back, but he was one of those people that just was like, yeah, come by any time. And the craziest thing, and I'll show all of you the video on my phone later. Um, <laughs> so they offered me a job as a production assistant on Creepshow when I was 17. 
And I said, wow, that's really, that's great. But I'm getting ready to go away to college. I'm gonna be a doctor because I'm following my dad's footsteps and I'm gonna save people's lives. <laughs> You're saving lives in a different way. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, real blood. So anyway, I said, look, I really appreciate that, but honestly, I can't, I can't, I can't. So they said, well, look, if you want to come visit, come by the studio anytime. They're shooting in Monroe, Pennsylvania, right where they shot Dawn of the Dead, down the street. So I would go visit the set. And the first time I went to visit, I, I'll never forget this. I drove out, it was, they had rented an old high school. The offices were in the high school, and the sets were built in the gymnasium. I parked my car, and I'm like, I don't know where I'm going. So I walk into the gymnasium, and I walk, and I see all this wood and these struts, and I walk around the corner, and I'm in the set, which I would later find out was the crate. There was a big swath of blood on the floor, and it was like the, the checkered green and white floor. And I went, this is so cool. Like one minute I'm standing there looking at the backs of, of the back of like all this wood and then I walk around and I'm in another world. So that's where I met Tom Savini for the first time. I met Tom at that visit. So I would drive there on weekends and hang out while Tom was building Fluffy and he was building the effects for Creepshow. So I became sort of part of the crew as a fan, like a 17 year old kid. And they never, they were, you know, like nowadays you're like, get that kid out of here. <laughs> Who are where's you? Your Who are your NDA? credentials? <laughs> you have an NDA and where's your pass? Yeah. But back then, like, they didn't, they like loved it. Kids would come and hang out. Right, right. So that was my first experience was going to visit the set of Creep Show. So I go off, I do three years of college. I'm really smart. Um, I did great. Round of applause then, for you. Round of applause. Uh, I have you, right? No, you didn't have to clap. <laughs> I don't want your sympathy clap. Um, so then the summer of my senior year, this is the funniest thing, and I'll make this story short, but so I'm interning at different hospitals. So I'm working in Pittsburgh, and I'm like, one, one day I'm working in cancer research, and one day I'm doing cardiology, and one day I, I go in, uh, and I work surgery, so I'm watching like doctors do cut the stuff open, and I'm standing right there, smelling all the burning flesh from the yeah. <laughs> And then the next day, they go, hey, so we, we got uh, a green light on Day of the Dead. And I went, see ya! And I just <laughs> literally bolted from my pre-med career, and I like had lunch with George, and he said, do you want a job? And I said, yes. So I drove home, got a speeding ticket on the way home, I was so excited. <laughs> but I went and told my mom and dad, I'm like, hey, so remember this pre-med doctor thing that you spent all this money on? You know, we take over the family practice and I'm destroying the Nicotero name forever. Um, I said, I'm gonna take a semester off school and I'm gonna work on this movie. And my folks went, great. That's they were amazing. so cool That's about amazing. it. And this was before, by the way, you know, you guys live in a world where Everybody embraces us loving this shit. 40, 50 years ago, people didn't embrace it. Like, yeah. I was like the weirdo. I was like the kid who loved horror movies and nobody understood it. So the fact that now we get to come to conventions and celebrate it, this is a big, big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Because when I was a kid, nobody... <laughs> I loved Star Trek and I loved Lost in Space and I loved all this horror stuff and I took girlfriends to the movies and they're like, yeah, it was really nice knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me. It was so funny. Yeah. So now we're in this world where people celebrate it. Everybody's here. But when, when I was younger, they didn't know how to process people that loved the goring stuff. Well, why did just, you, you know, why did you like it? You should like this around Halloween time. Now you have that one day, and after that, you're just weird if you still continue to yeah. want to dress up yeah, or that's whatever right. it is. Yeah, you, you could like it for Halloween, and then after Halloween, it's like, well, it's Christmas time. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's really interesting to me that I feel like I, at that time in my life, which was late 70s, early 80s, was right before the explosion of 
American Wild from London, mm -hmm. the thing, and the howling, yeah. and Rick Baker, and Rob Lutin, and Tom Savini, and, and I feel like I was there right before all that stuff happened. And it was really fascinating, because I moved to LA in 1985, and at that point, that's all everybody wanted to talk about, yeah. was Stan Winston, and Rick Baker, and makeup effects, and creatures, and horror movies, because they exploded on the scene between you know, Friday the 13th and Dawn of the Dead onward and still to this day. So I feel like I was fortunate because if that explosion hadn't happened, I would have been that kid. You would have done that movie and been like, well, maybe I'm going to uh, yeah. go back to med school. Or the know? kid who everyone, nobody understood. Yeah. Like why I thought it was yeah. cool. So thank you guys all for thinking it's cool like I do. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And also just the love in this room and the love in this convention. I mean, we've had a couple of years off, but walking into the doors, we were setting up uh, yesterday, and just walking in the doors, that energy you feel, and everyone is so happy and smiling, so thank you to all of you for coming yeah. here and supporting Greg and supporting Midsummer Scream. We, could, we wouldn't be here without you, so yes, thank you. It's pretty great. And I, and I have to say that for the last 12 years, I've been in Georgia every summer filming The Walking Dead. So this is the first summer in 12 years. I've been That's home. Right. So I'm like, damn, it's hot here. <laughs> Wait, oh, come like, on. It's I mean, George George brutal, though. George is, I know, but I'm... But I'm you're used, used to it. it. You're used to the so I was like, why is it, I don't remember it being so hot. And I think my wife went, you haven't been here in yeah. 12 years. Like, <laughs> you forgot. So I'm excited to be here because I've always loved this show, but I never got a chance to be here. So I'm walking around going, this is so great. Because it's the best show. It's the best. Midsummer Scream is the best. Um, so I want to get into, so I am a lover of all things spooky, all things paranormal. Um, I've done a lot of ghost hunting, and a lot of your work has taken you to historical places, haunted places. Have you ever had any sort of experiences? Okay, so yes. And it's really, I'm it's so a, glad the answer is yes. It's a really funny story. So. Um, there's a movie that John Carpenter directed called The Fog. Yeah. So those of you that have seen The Fog, okay. So there's a house in The Fog that Mrs. Kobritz, who's the babysitter of the little kid, and it's on this lake in Point Reyes. So she's watching Adrian Barbeau's kid, and the fog bank comes in, and you hear the little kid going, Mrs. Kobritz, and she opens the door, and she gets killed. Cut to, that's a movie term by the way, um, <laughs> cut to several years later, we're doing a, a remake of Village of the Damned that John Carpenter directed. So we go to Point Reyes where they shot the fog. Because John loved, uh, John had a house up there with Deborah Hill years and years ago. And they're like, oh, we have a house for you to stay in. Oh. And I said, oh, that's cool, like what house? And they went, oh, it's this. So the production's, uh, production assistant drops me off in this driveway of this house. <laughs> and I walk up and I'm like, it looks weirdly familiar. I've seen this before. So I open the front door and there's a front porch that had about 200 crosses nailed to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like, like yeah, this is the house you're going to stay during production. Were these here? <laughs> Oh, well, the woman that owned the house who died here put those up before she died. <laughs> and I went, huh. Oh. So I wish I had pictures, because that was before cell phones. I don't have any photos of it. So we walk in, and it's the house from the fog. It's the house where the woman gets killed, and the little kid is hiding, and then Jamie Lee Curtis and Tom Atkins save him. So we go in and they're like, oh, this is the house. And you know, yeah. You know, and meanwhile, the in your mind, you're like, oh, God. And the one died to... here. <laughs> but meanwhile, so I was like, okay, great. So we go to the grocery store and I'm putting, I open the cabinet. There's food there. There's it's like food. an Airbnb. They left everything. <laughs> like, well, the woman died. They're just like, yeah, it's all fine. Just there was med like, like medicine in the Like old crusty the, food and medicine? Medicine in the, in the cabinet in the bathroom. <laughs> you never maybe know. Maybe why this you, story gets weird. You were almost a doctor, so you wouldn't know what to do with Yeah, it. I went, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so, okay, so one night, so I'm like, all right, so they're 
They're telling me a woman died in his house. There's all the crosses, there's all this weird stuff. So one night, and, and it was on, the, the, the water was, went out to the ocean. So when the tide would come up, it was water from the ocean. And at night, the rats that lived under the house would scurry around as the water would come up. Great house. I'm like, can I get a better house? <laughs> 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 Somebody help me out here. So one night, I go to bed, and I, and I lay down, and I close my eyes, and I'm there. And I can hear the rats running around, I can hear the water rising, and I can hear all the stuff. And I felt this, like, face, like, literally right here. And I could feel, like, you know, if you close your eyes and you can feel the movement in like the Like something's air. close to you, yeah. 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 And it was there, and it was like, there was something right there, and I was like, okay, something's there. Where were you? Like, were you laying down? Were you I sitting? Laying you down, were laying down. I was laying okay. down. I was going, I was in bed. And I'm laying there, I'm in this back room, which is probably her room. And for about two minutes, the I was room. there. It was just like that long? Room. And I you just stayed? Open, you didn't move? No, I didn't open my eyes, because in my head, of course, my imagination is pretty magnificent. As, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, whatever I imagined, she was probably like, hey, how's it going? Like, but no. in my head, it was like Bernie Wrights. And, <laughs> so She's probably like, a very oh, nice lady. You didn't even give her a chance. She probably was like, yeah. I left the medicine for you and the crusty food in the cabinet. I know. <laughs> anyway, so hi. that might have been the last night I slept in that room. Yeah. So then sure. I slept on the couch. It was you the stayed rest. in the house, though. I stayed in the huh. house. I mean, it's a pretty then, iconic and house. And then we went back to LA and then we came back and I'm like, motherfuckers, I want another house. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me stay in that house again. I'm not staying in that house again. So I had a different house. But it was, it was one of the first times where I, it was there. And I was like, okay, do I want to open my eyes? Because whatever I see, you can't unsee. So I just chose to just, <laughs> just let, it, let be. it be. But you felt something. Yeah. You felt something. That's great. Yeah. I love that. And the next day, my wallet was empty. She took all my money. <laughs> all my money for me. And my car keys were gone. Everything. Crazy. I mean, she was just trying to distract you. Yeah, I heard my car go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it wasn't really a pleasant experience, but it wasn't like a scary experience. Oh, I was, or were no, you scared? I was pretty scared. Were you? And you were alone, so I guess that could be a little yeah, scary. Yeah, in a house where with 200 crosses, I was expecting fully to walk out and see all the crosses and they would all be no, like, turn up upside down. Down. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, I'm going out the back door. Yeah, I'm not even going to so walk by like, yeah, the crosses. Yeah, the car's been out front for 10 minutes, I'm like, yeah, I'm out the back. Yeah, see you later. It was really freaky. I mean. And John laughed at me. John Carpenter was like, <laughs> Do you think it was on you think it was on purpose? They're like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna get him that house. No, we didn't get him probably. a hotel. But. I'm sure John went, Nicotera would appreciate this house. And you're like, no, I don't. Yeah, I'm like, I don't like yeah. it. No, thank you. No. So That's a fun story. <laughs> as a person who creates you create literal fear for people in very different ways, depending on how people interpret your films and your shows. Um, what is your biggest fear? Besides spiders. We know you're afraid of spiders. I don't know. I'm not afraid of much other than that. Honestly. Just spiders. Yeah, because I realize that fear cripples you in certain ways that stops you from doing what you are meant to do. And I don't... You know, people are like, what's your, what movie scares you? What's this? Most of my uh, events that scared me when I was much younger. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, that moment that we're talking about from Village of the Dam was in 1995, maybe. I think because I'd been through a lot in my life at that time, mm -hmm. I might have been a little more susceptible to it, honestly. But I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm afraid of things that parents are afraid. Your children, your, your kids being safe. and things like that. But yeah. those are irrational fears right. that come from separation. You know, like when I'm away from my my family for a long time, I have weird anxiety about that. But that's anxiety that's based completely on normal. guilt. That's yeah. anxiety based on me not being able to be around my family. But like when we're on set and like the actors are like, oh my god, that terrified me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> amateurs. Yeah. So. You know, it's it's a good question because you know, from a from a sort of 
the final element. I'm not really afraid of that much stuff, other than kind of that spidery. Spiders, yeah. I mean, I, I, but my, crabs are fine. Crabs are fine? Crabs, that's weird. Like, so people are afraid of spiders, crabs. but crabs... I mean, I feel like you're going to encounter spiders probably more often than crabs. We're in Long Beach, though, so I feel like crabs maybe is higher on the list this weekend. But I mean, for the most part, I think you're fine. <laughs> it's anybody's game. We still have two more days. Um, OK, so now I'm going to ask you about aliens, vampires, werewolves, Bigfoot, Mothman, Loch Ness, Chupacabra. Do you believe in any of that stuff? Long pause. I'm thinking. You know, I'm, I'm vampires, mm, werewolves, like that kind of stuff. Vampires. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I believe that there are people out there who invest in the mythology. Fair. I don't know if I, I don't know if I believe in that. Now, aliens. Let's go down the alien rabbit hole. I'm going to go down the alien path for a little bit. Only I love because, this rabbit hole. Um, it's hard for me to comprehend that when you look up in the sky that there's not. Like, oh, there's one planet, and it's a bunch of people who sit in their cars and sit in traffic <laughs> for seven hours to come to a convention. It wasn't seven hours for me, but probably some of you. So I have a hard time believing that this is the only existence of sentient life. Okay. I, I, I can't believe that there isn't something somewhere that figured it out and went, hey, we can get you to Long Beach in 10 minutes, not seven hours. Um, <laughs> But it's, you know, I think it's because I'm a little older than most of you, and I, I feel more introverted about looking back on, you know, I grew up when the UFO scare and what was the what was the show that Leonard Nimoy was the host? Um, what was it? In search of. Thank you. In Search Up was a big deal when we were younger because it was like, you know, like the Incas and crop circles and all this stuff. And now we have ancient aliens now. And I know, so many shows. but everybody debunks it. You, it's easy yeah. to just debunk it. Whereas but when, the ancient astronaut theorists will give you their reasons why it could be real. So, you know. No, but, but, <laughs> but before the internet, you didn't have access to the debunking. True. True. So you would be like, oh my god. Like my dad was... My dad's a big UFO buff, and he had this book. I, I gave it to John Carpenter, and it was called UFOs Have Landed. It was a yellow book with like red lettering on the side, and you open it, and there were pictures of UFOs, like That's literally. So great. And I That's loved great. this book, and I remember we were shooting, I was shooting with John, and I took it to his house, like, you have to have this book. And it was like literally pictures of UFOs, but they looked like Aurora, Mo Aurora model kits, like with, oh, okay. and light. <laughs> but they were so cool, and I was convinced as a little kid, like, oh, there's, these are of course, these are real. Yeah. So I think the idea that there was more mystery to things, like now there's no mystery, there's no mystery to yeah. anything. But the mystery, it's what you didn't know that made it provocative. Absolutely. So I feel like, I feel like our generation now. There's less opportunities for things to be provocative because everybody will disprove it within 10 seconds. So you don't even have, you don't have that, that week of like, oh my God, did you hear that an alien ship landed? And when we were young, like, oh my God. I remember specifically, I have a scar, I have a scar on this finger right here. See the little scar yeah. right there? So when I was really little, my brother ran out into the backyard because he was convinced that there was a UFO flying in the backyard. Massive windstorm, lightning, and my my older brother, who was five years old, ran out. My dad chased him, and I stood in the doorway, and the door slammed on my finger. So I have a scar right there. So there's proof that aliens exist <laughs> <laughs> right there That's all I needed. on my finger. But at that time, like in my brain, I remember seeing a UFO flying in my backyard, my brother runs, like, you know, the kid from Close Encounter. Yeah, <laughs> one of my favorites. Take it off. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely believe that there's something beyond us. Have I seen it with my own two eyes? No. Um, do I think that it exists? Yes. 
and maybe it's hopeful, maybe it's, you know. So me, I, I'm with you. Right? Like, I, I want it to happen, but my husband and I have this thing where I, he always says, if there's aliens, I want to be abducted. And I'm like, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> I don't want, I mean, like, I'm cool, hey, high five, thanks for visiting. If you need a couch <laughs> to sleep on, I got you, but I don't want to be abducted. Do you want to be abducted? No, I'm all right. Hold on, if they, if, they if, they me, hold with... on. if they abducted me and they took my bed, my dogs, my iPad, <laughs> <There's criteria. laughs> yeah, then I would be like, okay, well, if you abducted me, but I can sleep in my own bed. <laughs> but wait, did you guys see Nope? Is yeah. Woo! <laughs> All right, I'm going to talk about it. No spoilers. Uh, but Stephen Young's in it, who was in The Walking Dead. Woo! It was super we love Stephen. It was super fun. And I liked it, and I hate everything. Do you really? Oh, let's My let's review see. is Greg Nicotero didn't hate it, which is and a you said, super, way. you said super fun. Wait, why do you hate everything? I would tell me more. Because I'm always disappointed. Because I have, look, I have very easy criteria for movies. I want to be entertained. Just entertain me. It doesn't have to be super smart. It doesn't have to be clever. I just want to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, in the movies that I see, I'm always let down because I'm, the first five minutes I'm like, all right, I know what's going to happen. And it's not because I'm that smart, because I'm not that smart. I look smart, but I'm not that smart. <laughs> but I just want to be taken on a journey. Right. I want there to be some effort put into it. A non-predictable journey. And I think with, with me, with that particular movie, because I went, Andy Lincoln and I went with my kids on Sunday. Like, Let's go see No, because Steven's in it, so we got to go support Steven. And we had a great time. And then, you know, the funny thing about it was we got home and we went to dinner and then we just kept talking about it. And that's, in my opinion, that's a successful movie. Absolutely. So, of course, we texted Stephen and we asked him all the questions that we didn't get. That's <laughs> and he explained everything. And that's great and we that went, you have Oh that. my God, that makes so much sense. So, if anybody has any questions about no, right. come just talk to me. I'll tell you what I know. Fill us in. Because Stephen filled me in on all the good juice. And it made sense, and I went, oh my god, that's so smart. It's like, you know, when you watch a movie and then you have to read on Wikipedia and you go, oh, I didn't get that, but that's really cool. Yeah. Well, usually but I got like, it from the actor. You watch, which is, is from the source. Exactly. Usually, like, you watch it twice, and by the second time, you get the things that you missed the first time, but getting it from the actor, then you're Yeah, but it's funny, because you, you have filmmakers, like Jordan Peele, you have filmmakers that put these really unique things in there. And they're only if you really... You're really tuned in. Yeah, you're yeah. super tuned in. And if you don't get it, you don't lose anything from the experience. But if you do get it, it's like you're getting something extra. A little extra. A little so, bonus. Steven, so Stephen was texting like, oh, well, this is what that means. And I'm like, no I would have never got yeah. that. Because I'm not that smart. Which is... Well, I, but I, it was really cool. So anybody wants to know? It's impressive too because to be able to do something new, I think at this time we're not seeing a lot of new newness. We're yeah. seeing a lot of things being remade and old things being redone, which there's totally nothing wrong with that. Um, but when you see something that is, you're like, wow, I didn't think of that or I've never seen that before. That's yeah. it's pretty impressive. I mean, I love Jordan Peele's movies because they're so unique, and he the conventions are completely thrown out the window. And that's what I love about his movies, because they really do keep you guessing. And I feel like a lot of filmmakers could, could take a cue from that in terms of just really, you know, I don't want to ruin anything for people, but I really, I had a good time and I loved that when I walked out of the theater, I kept talking about it yeah. and thinking about it. And those are the kinds of movies that, that I really enjoy. Movies, you know, I loved Hereditary. Loved that movie. Loved Hereditary, had no idea where it was going. Love Ari Asher's movies. And then Midsummer, very different. It was such a different experience. And my 20 year old son went crazy for that movie. He and I went to see it. And, and those movies are, are very, um, they divide people. You either mm -hmm. love them or you hate Absolutely, them. Absolutely, yeah. People like, I talked to Tom Savini, who, who just hated Hereditary. I loved it. I loved it too, and I had no idea what to expect. But it's funny because you have people who either love it or they hate it. 
And if they hate it, I'm always like, huh. Tell me why. It creates a conversation. Why did you, yeah, yeah. Why did you hate it? And if they lose stupid, then you're like, all right. Well, well then never mind. We're not going to do this. Movie. Movie. We're done. We're moving on. But I, but I, I love movies like that. I love movies that, that engage me and that entertain me. I don't want to know where I'm going. I don't want to figure it out. You're in for the ride. And I want the ride to be good. And if yeah. at the end, if the ride doesn't pay off, then I'm going to Well, be that pissed. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I think with that, we're going to move on. For this, uh, what's in the coffin? Oh, I know yeah. you, well, you've been waiting. So we're going to do this quick because I know you guys have questions. So we're going to do a what's in the coffin and then we'll open it up for some questions and uh, we'll go from there. Are you ready? But I want some help from the audience. Oh, no, there's no cheating. Yes, that's no, cheating. Not cheating. Come it on. is. They don't know what's in there. How's it cheating? They're, they're going to know because they're going to see. Oh, just, you, you just, just wait. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna... wait, there's a mirror right there. So I can don't cheat. No cheating. No cheating. <laughs> Alright, do I have to, should I walk off stage? No, you can just stay there. I covered it. Is it a spider? Oh, you're going to put it right in front of me? Spider. You can't see, so they can see. Oh, you can't see this. You're doing two rounds. Give me that. Yeah, you can't see that. Wait, do I get clues? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, I don't know how to, you have to explain, wait, explain the game to me. <laughs> All right, I'm putting my, I'm going to save the audience and put my microphone down. Okay. okay, so this is how this game works. There's two handholds on the side of the coffin. There's an item that is on a, a, a raised platter. So you're going to go in there and you're going to feel it. And you're going to have to do some, like, work to figure out what it is. I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna hold this. Is this like something you got at the hotel when you checked in? <laughs> no. No, it, it wasn't it's my suitcase. The, it's just this, right? Well, you have to, okay, open the bag and you're gonna get a hand. Oh, I have to open, open the sorry. bag? Oh. I thought you had x ray vision. I thought you would at least see well, that. If I had x ray vision, I would know what it was. <laughs> you know, open the bag. I don't think you can see it in the mirror. No, I can't. All right. I don't know how that. Do you need help? I think we might. Hold on. Hold on. No. I'm just gonna continue until I find it. Someone, someone help. What? <laughs> yes, Kelly's gonna help. Yeah. She's gonna Just do don't it. chop my fingers off. Just don't let him see it though, either. Does no one can see it? No, he can't. Okay. Everyone, everyone else can everyone see else it, right? You guys already good. know what it is. Oh, Anybody that knows sign language is fine. No cheating. Hey. No, no, no cheating. <laughs> okay, so now she's gonna put the item, you have to, there you go. Aww. That's your only hint. Aww. Do you want a hint from the audience? No, no. I'm okay, all right. You said you wanted to help. Thoughts, comments, concerns? I'm just thinking. Okay, so there's little flippers. There's, there's little feet. Yes, there's little feet. It's, a star, it's not a starfish. It's not a starfish. But it does have little feet. And it, I'm trying to pull this to see if it like makes a noise like mama or no, something. No, that, that's attached. That's attached. It's attached. What is it? Wait, what's your little boy? <laughs> that's called cheating. No, it's not. Look, look, he's going to help me. You want to give him a hint? Give me a hint. Give him a hint. It's something adorable. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> is it you? <laughs> um, oh boy. One more hint. Don't get it wet. Oh, it's a grandma. <laughs> okay. You can, you can take it out now. You can look at it. It's yours. Look at how cute it is. Aww. Here, catch. Aww. It's not potato salad. It's not potato salad. 
but it feels like potato salad. That's fair. It's in. It's, it's in, like dip. It's like. I mean, I think I can give that to you because technically it is a dip. Not can you any other? What kind of dip? Maybe you can smell. <laughs> <laughs> I just smell, I don't know what it is. Um, is you said dip, so that's close enough. Is that good? Do I win? You win, but let me give you a paper towel. No, what is it? What is so it's actually um, a tuna salad with cracker pack of paper towel. <laughs> I was like, what's gross, but also like not super gross? No, Here's paper towels. Did you? I love tuna. That's why when I smell my finger, it smells like my salad. My also wet wipes, that's and that's yours. Um, he's like, it's alright, it's fine. And it's, it was just freshly open, so you can eat it if you actually oh, want. I have the crackers. It was like three weeks old. <laughs> old, crusty tuna. Um, 